morning, stampers and crafters. Welcome to Tina's Crafty Ink Spot and my Technique Tuesday. Today, for our technique, we're going to be making mini calendars. Mini calendar and note holders. I'm going to show you four different ways to do it. Um, about this time of year, I start making these. Um, because I do do some craft fairs, and I also use them as gifts. They're great gifts for people, men or women. And I'm going to make, well, we'll make a masculine card for the guys, and we'll make a magnetic one. You can stick it to your refrigerator. We'll make one that's got the post-it note and the pencil, and we'll show you how to make this. Here's a little bit smaller one. Somebody doesn't have a very big uh, desk. And all of these compress and you can mail them. So we are going to jump right in. And what I will do in the uh, uh, notes in this video, I will put the time that each one starts. So, say like you didn't want to make this one and you wanted to jump to making this one, I will put the time in which this one starts. So that way you don't have to kind of watch the whole video to find the one you want to make. I will also, in the uh, description of this post, I have created uh, PDF templates. And I will put a PDF template for each one in the notes of uh, the blog post so you can print these out and you'll have them for reference it'll have all the measure measurements and score lines on doing each one so let's start in and what we're going to do is I'll, I'll start with the fastest and the first one and this one is a magnetic a small magnetic one that you can um, stick to your refrigerator on these, I have these little mini calendars, and I will put a link in the blog post also. I get these through a company called Tailored Expressions, and you get, what is it, 10 of them for like $3.50. And so I've got my new ones for 2020 here, and I'll put a link to where to get these. And this one does use uh, little magnets. And all I did is go to the craft store and I found these little tiny round uh, craft magnets. And they're $2.99 and you get, I think you get 24 of them, I think. It should say on here. But yeah, you get 24 pieces. So you get... Um, two sheets of 12 and you only need a couple plus you can do like I did um, I used the dots but you can also use other parts of that sheet and I just trimmed it and made a magnet long on the bottom so we'll get to that so let's pull out our supplies what I did do to try to save a little bit of time on this was pre-cut everything so basically we're going to work on uh, scoring and assembly and the I'll have lists of all the items right on the blog post now on this first one I use a little bit of chipboard to give it that nice sturdy feeling now you do not need to go buy chipboard if you have have a package designer series paper the very back of your designer's series paper is this thin cardboard that comes in those. That works perfect as chipboard, so you're multi-purposing. Keep that background from your uh, DSP uh, packages. So I've cut this down. Let me get, the, get everything out here for you and the measurements. So on this PDF, it's going to give you the measurements, and it'll also have a little diagram for you. So the chipboard, this piece right here that we're using from the DSP package, this is 3 inches by 4 inches. And we're also going to cut a piece of cardstock 
that is three inches by four inches to cover this. So it'll, it'll cover perfectly. The paper that we are using for this one is the Press Petals DSP. Um, I did find during, you know, during this time of year, you know, when a lot of things are changing, the new catalog, you have a lot of extra designer series paper. Use your old designer series paper. You can create all kinds of different things. Use up that those small pieces you need to use. So what we're going to do is I'm going to, you're going to need glue and um, for these projects you'll need glue and your tear and tape you need a good adhesive your snail isn't going to be quite strong enough for these so either use your glue or tear and tape which both work very well so let's go ahead and start this one out so I'm going to just like I said this one is really quick so I'm gonna glue this on to my and I'm going to do the shiny side of this to be on the back. It doesn't really matter. It's just a little quirky thing. So then we've got this. And I'm going to bring in my corner rounder. And I'm going to round two corners. Both of these will fit in here. And then for my designer series paper, I'm going to round two of the corners of that. It's being stubborn this morning. Can't get it in there. So we've got our two corners. And now I'm going to take, this is the washi tape pressed petals. It is really neat. You can make these little flowers with washi tape. And it's a two rolls. I think this has, if I recall, I don't have the packaging, but I recall there's a hundred petals that come on this roll of washi tape. And then you get this kind of uh, uh, retro, or not retro, kind of rustic other washi tape with it. So what I want is I want to put a little strip of this just for a little contrast. You can just tear it off. I'm going to put it towards the top. Just to add a little accent to it. And now we'll connect this to our project. Isn't this pretty? Even the back side of this is pretty. This is a really pretty paper. I'll have a link to it in my description. So, line that up on there. And now we're going to create our flower. And what I did is I brought my little rubber silicone mat. And I took and cut out a little half inch... Um, circle out of white scrap we're going to use that to build our flower so i got to find where it starts here that's the only hard part about this finding figuring out where your little petals start this only takes about mm, five or eight petals it depends. You could do a single layer or you can do like I did there and just kind of add a little bit, a little bit more. Keep losing my spot on this. So I think the base one is about five petals. And 
And I'm going to add a couple more just for some layering to give our flower a little more dimension. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to offset them on the, see if that shows up a little better. So I'm just going to offset a couple of these just to give our flower some dimension. I think I'll do three. Let's do three. And then for the center, um, oh, and I didn't write down, I didn't write down, but these are those little flower centers that um, you can order. I'll have a link to them. They're little yellow, fuzzy. They're so cute and they have um, a little tiny dimensional on the back of them if you can get the sticky off we're just going to stick that right in the middle and then I'm going to show you a trick because these petals are very sticky let me find my tweezers here so it'll come right up off your your mat and it's stuck to the, the little round circle you did. Take your embossing buddy that's got powder and just tap your flower. And it's going to get rid of that sticky so that you can move your flower around. So we'll bring that in. And then I've got a leaf here from the Rooted in Nature. I just did one leaf and did the embossing on it. In the set of dies, you'll see it's got the, the embossing to emboss it. So we have a leaf. The greeting here is from Itty Bitty Greetings. And I just did Happy Day. I wanted something with, you know, day or something because it is a calendar. So what I want to do is I want to put my calendar first so I know where my flower goes. And these have a cover page on them. You can just peel that off. And I am good. To, so use glue or your tear and tape here. Because you, you don't want this to fall off. So I'm just going to. You know I'm a glue girl. So we're using glue. Either will work. Whichever you prefer. Just make sure it's a good adhesive. And I'm going to center this on here. leaving just a little bit of our uh, our base design there showing our base cardstock the dark this is Mary Merlot to go with our press petals and now I want to add my flower so again I'm a glue girl we're gonna add some glue only needs to basically be in the center and I'm going to move it up just a little so they can peel the calendar easily. So I'm going to set that there. And I'm going to put a little bit of glue on the tip of my leaf here. And then I'm just going to tuck it underneath there. And I'm going to do the same thing with the greeting. But I'm only going to put glue on about half and then I'm just gonna tuck that right in there and there you go and now we'll add our magnets what did I do with them there they are this is a really quick and it's it's such a uh, cute little like I use them for um, Stocking stuffers. Uh, my family absolutely adores getting them. So we're going to pop out our magnet here. I'm going to pop out two of them. I'm actually going to pop out three and show you what I did for them. I'll just put this back in the package. So I took my snips and I 
just snipped the bottom edge there. And I'm going to put that on the bottom. It just gives it a nice little... I mean, these magnets are plenty strong. Just use the dots. But I'm one of those, I like to use every part of everything. So I'm just going to set that one there. And they've already got adhesive on them. One there. One there. There! You are done! You have made this cute little adorable calendar. And it sticks right to the refrigerator or their filing cabinet. Whatever they need. Alrighty, so we got that one. Let's move on to number two. And clean off our little space here. And now this one under the PDF is going to be called Mini Magnetic Calendar. So when you're looking for the PDF down below, it's, that's what it's called. Let's just move our washi out. Okay, let's do number two. Let's do the calendar. This one is called the calendar easel card, uh, uh, calendar and note. And now this one I did for a masculine. Um, I have a, I ride motorcycles as many of you know, so I have a lot of people that I have to make motorcycle gift type things for. So I just used, this is One Wild Ride. Um, I, I think it has retired, but if you have it, it makes excellent masculine cards. I just embossed some uh, silver foil to make it look like, uh, what do they call that? I um, can't even think of what it's called. But anyway, so I just did that one. I embossed the motorcycle in black and did uh, my embossing here. And I used the Born to Ride popped up, and that's what holds your calendar sitting correctly. It's kind of hard to show you guys. See how it's popped up there? And this one actually folds flat and mails perfectly in a regular four and a quarter by five and a half envelope, A2 envelope. Okay, but we're going to change this one up a little bit. We're going to do a call. So we're going to use the new, the uh, geared up garage set. Because, you know, guys have desks too. They need their, their calendars on their desk. So what we are using on this one is the designer series paper from the classic garage. And we're using some layering ovals. Um, we're using uh, the Geared Up Garage uh, stamp set. That's what we stamped this in. I actually black embossed this and then colored it with um, Mango Melody Stampin' Blends. Just something different, a yellow Mustang. And then I did use from the One Wild Ride life is a journey enjoy the ride I, I love this saying so um, I did use that out of the one wild ride got ourselves a couple gears here and this is another one that goes together really fast we got our little calendar so what you have here is you have a four and a quarter by eleven sheet now this one will do um, the whole calendar with one sheet of paper, you know, other than your DSP. Okay, this will use one sheet of cardstock. So this is four and a quarter by 11. And we've got another piece, which is our, our easel card front. And this is four and a quarter by five and a half in the black. So what we'll do is we're going to bring in our trimmer or our. Uh, Score. You, if you have a scoreboard, you can use that too. So your first score is going to go at two and three quarter. So we're going to score it at two and three quarter, and at five and a half. So 
set that aside. And this is your actual easel um, mechanism. You know, use your bone folder and get nice crisp um, folds. Okay, so there's your easel mechanism right there. It's that easy. So we want to add, okay, so this is the back here, the part that you just scored. So that's the back. We don't need to put anything on that. But we want to decorate the front where the calendar is going to sit. So you need, I used this out of the gear, um, Garage Gears DSP, and it is four by five and a quarter. And so you'll need two of those because we're going to use one for the front of the calendar too. So I'm just going to attach that right here. Use your favorite adhesive here. You can use your snail here if you wanted. So we're going to attach that here. Okay, now we're going to use, we're going to decorate our front. Let's set that aside a little bit and we're going to add the other. This was the four by five and a quarter. Attach that here. And now I I black embossed the car and then colored it. I did add a little bit using my light pool party, a little shadow around it, and that kind of makes your your image pop. It makes it look more 3D. So we're gonna attach that to another piece of the DSP we just did I did the layering ovals so let's just attach that okay. and this one I'm going to use some dimensionals and pop it up adding a couple little things here so I'm going to kind of offset this up toward the top so let's put it about there and then we've got to have our life as a journey and I colored in the journey with the same uh, mango melody that I used on the car Some dimensionals to that. Let's set that one about right here. And then I cut out some gears in the in the set that goes with this. There's some really cool gears. I couldn't decide if I wanted black or silver, so I kind of cut out one of each so I could try to decide. I could do both. Mm. What do you think? Black, silver. I think the silver gets a little bit lost. Let's let's stick with our black. I'm just gonna add a little glue to this. I didn't go real crazy decorating this one because you know guys aren't you know as much into the whole 
poofy thing. Okay, now this piece, fold your card in half, okay? Fold it, and this is where your, your mechanism is, see there? Just fold it down, add glue, here's your score mark, add glue. And then just line it up, lay it flat on there. That's another reason I use glue. So it just squares up to make a regular card size. And then see there? We have our, our easel. So now to make this stay, let's get our calendar ready. And what I did for the calendar, let's see, did I write down the measurements? I don't think I did. So, I cut an eighth inch bigger than the calendar. Let me find a ruler and I'll tell you the exact measurements. The measurements will all be on the uh, blog post. So your calendars, these little calendars, are about two and a quarter by... They're about two and a quarter by just about three. So that means I did about two and three-eighths by probably two and seventy. I'll have the measurements written down, but I wanted a little mat on here. So I think I just told you the wrong measurements, so don't write those down. I will have all the measurements written in the description for you. So we're just making a little mat for our calendar here. And then I matted it again with the green that matches our tire marks here. Just adds a little bit of character to it a little. So we're going to line this up on here. Make sure you use either your glue or your tear and tape here, your good adhesive. And we'll set this about kind of centered, but up just a little bit off the bottom. Now for this easel, you can leave it to where your calendar is what holds your easel. But I kind of wanted my picture standing a little straighter. So all I did is I, in the same stamp set, is I embossed your classic on some Whisper White. And I'm going to pop that up with dimensionals and it's going to work as an easel stop. Okay, so now I want to figure out where my easel's going to stop. So I only need to go a little bit above. Let's center this. About right there. And then it works as your, your easel stop because it's popped up. And there you go. There's your second calendar. How simple was that? And then it just pops up like that there you go okay let's start on number three see these go fairly fast i think the hardest part of most any card or project is trying to figure out your designs each day you know sometimes i get a little crazy with some of mine but it's fun just have fun okay so let's set that one aside so there's the two of that. One's a car, one's a motorcycle. And they fit in an envelope. So let's set that one aside. And this PDF will be called Calendar Easel Card. And it'll have all the measurements for you. And this little dot right here means that that's your easel stop. So you could use anything right here. 
you could actually cut out a couple of these gears and layer them together to make them fairly thick, thick. And you can put gears right there as your easel stop. So possibilities are endless. Okay, let's start on our third one, our third of four. So let's do this little one. This one is just a short um, calendar with a uh, easel stand and it fits a um, little thing of post-it notes and I just went to the dollar store and got some pen a package of pencils and you can also get your post-it notes at the dollar store you can get a package of post-it notes I think there you get like two post-it note packs for a dollar so that's what I normally do and then I just add a little pencil to go with it so let's start on that one and that one is going to be called the short calendar and note template and I've drawn up your diagrams um, on these diagrams anywhere that is black I think I've noted it on here remove black areas that is not necessary if you don't want to I do it now the tutorials I've seen a lot of people don't but I did find when I removed these little areas my boxes folded easier so that is your own preference so that's just a little FYI as we get started so here we go let's get this one started got our little pencil our notepad calendar now this one I'm using the designer series paper perennial essence I I love this artistic paper it's it's just so pretty and then I use Rococo Rose as my cards so our first piece this is three and three quarter by ten and a half okay this is another one you could use you know one sheet kind of one sheet wonder deal so we're gonna bring in our scorer again and we want to score at four inches so we'll score at four then we're going to score at eight eight nine and ten so you have four score marks on this one and now for our box part this piece is four and three quarter by seven so what you want to do is on the long side we want to score at four four and at four and a half and then you want to turn it and you want to score a half inch on each side so we have a half over here so I'm going to score a half inch and then I'm going to turn it around and I'm going to score a half inch again on the other side okay. and that is all the scoring we need to do on that one and this is where I told you you don't have to do this if you don't want to but I trim out these little and just go right to your score lines and now on the long side of this I did trim down about an inch and a half and your easiest way to do that is um, go to an inch and a half on your scoreboard and just score and that will give you an easy way to measure it down and now I'm going to cut those little pieces out
There we go. Now this is definitely where you want to use your your tear and tape or your glue. So we're going to fold on our score lines, bring in our bone folder. We want to score our tabs. Go. So now you figure out which side is going to be your back. So obviously your back is the taller side here. Let's go ahead and round our corners on the top. And we want to add a little bit of DSP to the inside of our box. That's this right inside here. I don't remember. Oh, this is out of the... This DSP on this one is out of that... Uh, what was that special rose set we got that has the copper and everything? That's what this one is, if you're wondering. But we're going to take our designer series paper and this one is... Um, three and five eighths by three and seven eighths. So I just wanted a little eighth inch uh, border. So I'm going to round my two corners, figure out which side I want the top. I think we're going to do this as the top. So we're going to round those two corners. I'm going to attach it to the inside of our what's technically the inside of our box. Let's line that up on there. There we go. Now this is where you'll want to use your tear and tape. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll show you. I love this tear and tape. It's sure when they came out with that. So go to your, your far edge there just to make sure you have a good line. Okay, we've got our tearing tape on there. And we're going to do this to where our flaps are facing toward the back toward the back of your line, so that way you don't have a line showing in the front. It's kind of a, that's another one of those little OCD things you could do it either way, but I'm one of those. I'm one of those people. The little tiny details is where things go. So make or break you. See, I love tearing tape, but I can never get the little protective thing off. There we go. So now we're going to take, fold in where our tear and tape is. Make sure you're lined up and square. There we go. And then I just take my bone folder and put it inside so that I can press press down on my tape. Let's do our other side. I was really amazed at how simple these little boxes are to make. I, I'm not a fun fold kind of person. I don't do very good. I lose patience because I always mess them up. So there's your little note box. We're going to Okay, now we want to do the front. So I used the same DSP, but all I'm doing is using the back side just to give it a little contrast. I'm going to glue that down. I'm going to glue it right here to the front.
And this piece, I believe, is the... Which size is this? I don't have my... I will have all the measurements. But this little piece of DSP is about... I'd say it's about two and a quarter by three and a half. And it fits perfect, giving you a border. So we're going to take our little calendar here. We'll add that there. Reach inside your box and you can press press firmly. And while that's drying, we will get our easel base ready. So here's our base that we scored. Now let's do our folds. Now when I score something and fold it, I normally score it and then when I'm folding I fold with mountain in, what I call mountain in, uh, the, the raised part of your score. I call it mountain in. I find that if you fold with that one, your folds seem to come out a little um, straighter. So I just call it score with mountain in. I do the same thing when I'm making card bases. So we're just going to crisp up our little folds here. And then this, you are going to, this little half inch, you're going to line up and, because see now this, I messed up right here. Now this one has to be a W. So this middle score, sorry, has to go the opposite direction. So you kind of come up with a, a, a W looking or a V. Just then. So you've got your fold forward, fold back, fold forward. And now you take and I'm just going to use my glue and put glue on this half inch piece. Fold your card down and it should fold almost perfectly straight to it. Let's make sure it's secured nice. There's your easel. See what I mean about the V right here? So that'll allow your card to fold flat. And now we're just going to... I'm going to go ahead with this done the way it is. I want to round these two top corners. Put it in my corner rounder. And now we attach our box. This is again where you want to use your tear and tape or glue so you have a nice firm adhesion. I mean, it just lines up perfectly there. Lines up at the bottom. Look at that. Now for this one, I just wanted a little greeting. And this is from the Happy Day is from the Itty Bitty Greetings. I'll have a link to that one too. And I'm just going to put that right. We're just going to keep this one nice and simple. So I'm going to put Happy Day right in the middle there. I just stamped it on Whisper White and hand trimmed it. We have Happy Day. We're going to add our little post-it notes and a pencil. Looky there. We've created another one. Isn't that fun? Just a nice little simple one. Small and compact. There we go. That is number three. Now, on to number four.
We're making progress. Alright, so that last one we did was the short calendar note and template box. And now we're going to do the tall calendar note and template box. Now this one is basically the same as what we just did, but we're going to have a, a, it's a bigger one where we can put a little designs and things up here. So let's go with that one. Get our splies out. Okay, now these butterflies, these come from the butterfly gala, uh, the dyes, and they're, they're large sets of butterflies. I just did the two bottom ones with the die cut. Let me show you that die so you understand what we're talking about here. I think I have it. On this set of dies from the Butterfly Gala, you have these large butterflies. All I did is kind of lay my two butterflies on a piece of paper there, and I cut out these two with the solid, and it's got coordinating with the outline. So I did the same thing here, and then just layered them. I've got some uh, copper foil, and then some Knight of Navy to accent them with. So that's how, where those came from. So we are going to start out with... I've got all my little notes here so I can kind of tell you where we're at with this. So I used Rococo Rose again and the Perennial es Essence Designer Series paper and Knight of Navy that goes with this. So this one's going to have a little bit more, a little more character. And the greeting here is white embossed. And this is from um, the uh, Varied Vases set. And I just thought it was perfect for a calendar, hoping your day blooms with happiness. So we've got our little greeting there. And I just white embossed that on Night of Navy. So we've got our first easel base here. And the easel base is, this one is four and a quarter by 11, okay? And all we're gonna do with this piece is score it at five and a half, basically right in half. So we got our base. Oops, almost lost the butterfly. So we got our base there. And then we're going to fold it, mount it in. Use our bone folder. Make a nice crisp fold. So there's our base. And now, so let's get all our scoring out of the way first. So now this piece is going to be your base. So we're going to set that aside. Now this smaller piece is your easel mechanism. And this one measures three inches, three inches by four and a quarter. And what we're going to do to create our mechanism is on the short side, we're going to score it at half inch. And get that to line up. It's kind of harder. So we're going to score at half inch. And then we're going to score at one and a half inches, which is basically the center. And then we're going to score at two and a half, which is basically gives your half inch tabs on each side. So we're going to score it at two and a half. Now this is your easel mechanism. And when you fold this one, you want it to kind of look like a W. So let's go mountain in and score right in the middle. And then on your flaps, fold them opposite. Turn it over. Fold this one. 
So basically, you end up with a little W. See what I mean? It kind of looks like a little W. Okay, so that is our mechanism. And to get our mechanism on here, let's do the mechanism last. Okay, so we got our mechanism. Now let's do our note box. Here is our note box, which is four and three quarter by five and a half. For some reason that doesn't look like I cut that right. Let me make sure. Yep, I got four and three quarter by five and a half. And this is going to be our box, which we're going to make almost identical to the last one we just did. So let's bring in our scoreboard. On the long side, on your five and a half inch side, okay, there's your five and a half inch side. We are going to score at two and a half and at three. So let's score at two and a half. And three. Now we're going to turn it longwise, and let's do a half inch on each side. So a half inch there, I'm going to turn it around, and I'm going to do a half inch there. Okay, there's our box, and I'm going to do the same as I did on the other one, and I'm going to trim this little area out. You don't have to cut this little tab off. You do have to cut at least the the lines, but um, there's really no reason to have it. It's just more to try to glue and line up. And like I said, to me, it seemed like I tried it both ways. It just seemed like the box folded easier with them removed. So let's get our score lines all. Crisp. And here's our little box. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to put our tear and tape on one side. Now, this box, there is no tall side. So, just whichever way you want to do it. But, you know what, before I assemble that, let's decorate it. It's a little easier to decorate when it can lay flat. So, all I used here was some Knight of Navy and a piece of the Designer Series paper, which should be two and a quarter by three and a half. And then the, the mat is an eighth inch bigger. Yep, okay. So now remember, you want the top of the box. So let's put this one here. You're opening. Let's so we'll mat this on here. See, I like using glue because you can move, especially when you have such a fine border that you're doing. You can use your fingers and shift it just a little bit. You have just a little bit of wiggle room. So let's attach that. To the front top, front of our box. Okay, now let's assemble our box. We'll use our tear and tape again. I started researching these calendars and things, you know, I've been making them for years because I usually do at least one charity uh, craft fair to two every season and these are always a big uh, 
seller. People really like them. And like I said, my family gets them as uh, stocking stuffers. Everybody needs a calendar. Okay. So we're going to do it to where our flap faces backward. I just used my bone folder to press it down. And there we've got our note box already. Look at that. So now is our front of our project. We've got another Knight of Navy base, which should be four and an eighth by five and three eighths. And then the DSP is going to be four by five and a quarter. It's just an eighth inch smaller. This is a really, oopsie, I like to be able to have my glue to move. Okay, let's put that on the front of our project. Because here's the bottom where it opens. Okay, let's add our mechanism. Now, fold your mechanism with your W, okay? And your first one, you want your W, the top of your W, to be toward the inside. So I'm going to put glue on just this half inch piece. Glue or your, or your tear and tape. And line it up right on the bottom of your card to where it's level with the bottom of your card. Can you see that? Secure it. Fold your flap. Put glue or tape on your half inch piece and simply close your card and it'll line up perfectly. Secure it. And there's your easel. That simple. I first saw these, I was like, I don't know if I can do that. Look at that. Look how simple that is. Okay, now, now we have our box. So, I'm going to put glue on that. I want it to be nice and secure because the note, the sticky notes stick on there. I'm going to come up just a little bit off the bottom, kind of give myself an even gapping, gap, gap, look, I've already making up my new words today. Okay, we've got our note box. Now we're just going to take our greeting, and I'll attach that with dimensionals, so it pops out. I think the thing that takes you the longest than even making any of these is cutting up your stuff. I'm going to center that right in the top. Giving myself a little bit of gap. And then for my butterflies, when I do butterflies, you can use glue dots. But normally what I do is I just put um, adhesive right just on the body. And that way your wings can stick up. So let's put him 
out here. I'll put the other one doing the same thing. A bit of glue on his body. Uh, let's put him about there. And now we will add our calendar as soon as I find out where I put it. Now, let's see it now. adhesive let's just center it on our box oops I shifted it There you go, you have your your next one, and it stands up, we can add our little note paper, and we'll add a little pencil, if you want you can put a, make a little loop in order to put your pen or pencil on if you want, there's plenty of room on this one, I just pop it right inside, and there you go, so there you go, we have made four different mini calendars. So we got our tall calendar and note box, and that's what the PDF will be listed under. We have our short calendar and note box. Then we have our easel card calendar. Of course, this is my favorite. I just like the, the design of how these open and close. They're really nice for sending because you can mail it. So we've got the easel card, and then last but not least, we have our small magnetic calendars for your refrigerator. So there you go, four different ways to make mini calendar and note card uh, projects. I hope you enjoyed today's technique, and I will put all the information and the PDFs for you to print in the description, and I hope you have a happy stampin' day. Bye-bye now.